Carbohydrates. Yummy, yummy carbohydrates. If you've ever heard anyone referring to a low-carb diet, they are effectively referring to reducing the amount of carbohydrates they're eating. Foods such as potatoes, pasta, bread, cereal, sugary fruits, and sweets are all rich in carbohydrates, so pretty much all my favorite foods. Carbohydrates only consist of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen molecules in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 1, which is where they get their name, carbohydrates. The monomers for carbohydrates are called monosaccharides, and they usually contain 5 or 6 carbon atoms. These are often called simple sugars, And examples include glucose, which is a blood sugar, fructose, which is a fruit sugar, and ribose, which can be used to improve athletic performance and the ability to exercise by boosting muscle energy. Now, if you join two monosaccharides together, you get a disaccharide. So di for two. And of course they join together in a dehydration reaction. So here is an example of uh, a glucose and a fructose sugar joining together in a dehydration reaction where water is given off to form sucrose, which is when those two molecules are joined together. In the reverse reaction, you can of course add water in the process of hydrolysis in order to break apart sucrose to form glucose and fructose. And sucrose is actually just table sugar. So another example of a disaccharide is lactose, which is a sugar that you find in milk. And I'm sure you've heard of people who are lactose intolerant, and that's because they are unable to break down lactose into its monosaccharide elements. So both monosaccharides and disaccharides are sweet tasting and their function is to provide cells with a ready source of energy which is released when their bonds are broken. Complex carbohydrates are those with more than 100 monomers joined together. These are called polysaccharides. So poly means many. The most common polysaccharides are cellulose, chitin, starch and glycogen. They are all long chains of glucose, but they differ from one another by their orientation of their bonds that link these monomers. So cellulose forms part of plant cell walls. Although it's the most common organic compound in nature, humans can't actually digest it. However, cellulose is an important component of the human diet, making up much of what we refer to as fibre. Chitin also supports cells. The cell walls of fungi contain chitin, as do the flexible endoskeletons of insects, spiders, and crustaceans. Chitin is the second most common polysaccharide in nature. Starch and glycogen have similar structures and functions. Both act as storage molecules that readily break down into their glucose monomers when cells need a burst of energy. Most plants store starch. Potatoes, rice, and wheat are all starchy, high-energy foods in the human diet. Glycogen occurs in animal and fungal cells. In humans, for example, skeletal muscle cells in the liver store energy as glycogen.